Hi everyone, this is Lee here from ABC's Anesthesia. So today I'm going to be talking about the recovery positions for various problems in medicine and various deteriorating patient conditions. So what happened is I gave a tutor yesterday for junior doctors and we had a really good question which is what is the recovery position? And I mentioned the V position but I'm going to go into a little more detail in this particular video. So let's get started. I'm here with Greg. Now Greg is one of our new interns and he's very kindly volunteering to be my little guinea pig here. So he's now laying down as a patient, a deteriorating patient, and we're going to demonstrate the recovery position. There's, so there's pretty much two situations here. Now the first situation is a cardiovascular problem and the second situation is a respiratory problem. And I'll make some arguments as to why uh, you know, a different position is relevant for each problem. So here we go. So often with a cardiovascular problem, one of the main problems will be a lack of preload or afterload. So there's a lack of volume in the system. So you'll notice that often patients who have a slow heart rate from a vasovagal or some kind of collapse, they'll have their feet up. So it'll be called a Trendelenburg position. So kind of head down, feet up. That's really to take the volume from the legs all the way down and you know, bring it back into the central part of the body. So what does that look like? That looks like the legs going up. So I'm just gonna raise the legs now. And that way you can see that this positioning here is going to have the legs raised. You might also see this kind of angle here. So here we have Greg in the recovery position. I've got the legs up, which means that most of that volume uh, that, of, of blood that's in the legs will be going back down towards the heart, towards the central area of the body. And that will help aid the blood pressure and you know, hopefully bring the patient back to consciousness. So that's a really effective way of doing this. Now notice that I haven't got the head all the way down. Now the advantage of that is there's a lot of problems that can happen when your head is all the way down. For example, you know, airway management is difficult. If the patient's unconscious, you'll get passive regurgitation of gastric contents into the airway. So I'm trying to prevent that. So I've just got the legs up in the air and the head pretty much level. So I hope that made sense. If I've got a cardiovascular problem, I really just want to improve the blood supply back to the heart. Therefore, legs up is a really good way to go. So that's the first situation. Imagine someone who's fainted, so they've got a low heart rate. Maybe they need that extra volume to increase the heart rate pumping as well. Uh, maybe they've got, you know, they're having an anaphylactic shock and they're slowly losing consciousness because of the low blood pressure, or they're having a bleed and you just need to prop that blood pressure up rapidly. Sometimes I don't even use the controls on the bed. Literally, I'll just get someone to raise the legs and that provides an immediate resuscitative effort to provide volume back centrally. Now the next problem is someone who's got a respiratory issue. So imagine someone in, who's deteriorating because they're hypoxemic or have difficulty breathing. So what we say is that we want to increase the mechanical advantage of having the patient head up. So what this means is I just put the head of the bed up and this allows the lungs to have their best mechanical advantage. Now I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. Now let's say Greg's having a problem with his respiration, his ventilation or his oxygenation. There's a number of things that happen when I put the patient at 30 to 45 degrees head up. Now the first thing, there's this thing called FRC or functional residual capacity. And what that means is that when the head is up, that FRC, this space in the lungs at the end of a normal tidal volume or when the patient is at rest, so they're not inspiring or expiring, they're just at rest, that volume is gonna be greatest when, with the head up at supine or head down that reserve of oxygen in the FRC is going to be less. So I want to really maximize the FRC. It's got lots of really major functions, but pretty much I can, to go through them specifically, it provides a big oxygen reserve. At FRC, you have the highest compliance of the lungs. So that's a really good mechanical advantage that aids the respiration, lowest pulmonary vascular resistance. It aids preventing atelectasis and buffers all the variations of your oxygen. So this is some intense physiology. Just believe me when I say that FRC and maximizing FRC in a patient deteriorating from a respiratory cause is a really good thing. Now, as I was mentioning, it provides a really good mechanical advantage. Imagine if you're lying down or your head is down, you've got the weight of gravity and it's very difficult to breathe. But when your compliance is maximal, when you're you know, having 45 degrees or even elevated a bit more, you're able to breathe more effectively. You don't have the weight of your stomach or you know, say you have an obese patient, the weight of their stomach and chest impairing their breathing. So if I have anyone with a respiratory issue, I get them in this kind of 45 degree or 30 degree head up position. Now aside from increasing the FRC and improving the mechanical function of the lungs, 
When you have the patient at a 30 degree or 45 degree head up position, you improve the positioning of the airway. And you'll notice that a lot of time we talk about the sniffing the morning air position. You can, which really is your mastoid process lining up with your sternal angle. When you have the patient head up, that is already optimized. Therefore, the conduit, the passage of air going through from the mouth down into the trachea has improved because you automatically put the head in the right position. And also it's much easier to manage the airway, do jaw thrusts, chin lifts, head tilt. If the patient was head down with the head quite low, this is more difficult to do. It's far easier to intubate, bag mask, LMA ventilate with a patient has, having with a 30 degree head up type position. So that's pretty much it. That's the way I think of deteriorating patients and recovery positions. And know that sometimes you'll have a patient with an unknown issue. Maybe they've got some cardiovascular problems and some hypoxemia or respiratory problems, in which case I might combine those methods and put the legs up and the head slightly up. So I'm improving venous return to the heart, but I'm also allowing the opportunity to maximize the patient's respiratory function ventilation as well as airway intervention. And that position is kind of this V position, which I'll show you now. So this, this position here, you can see that the bottom of the patient is the lowest position. I've got the legs going up and then I've got the head slightly up as well. That is a reasonable recovery position for any patient when you're not really sure exactly what's going on or they've got cardiovascular and respiratory issues. So I hope you enjoyed that video. We've just gone through the recovery positions for a deteriorating patient, the cardiovascular best recovery position, the respiratory function best recovery position, and then the combined approach. Um, and yeah, thank you very much, Greg, you. for joining us and uh, helping us to educate. See you next time.